Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ben Cotterell. I'm a new business manager here at FileMaker, and I'm your host today for Idea to iPad, where we will build a custom solution from scratch and deploy it to iPad in less than an hour. We will be using one of the most popular responses from our survey posted prior to this live event. We are also joined here today with Ryan Minook. He is a sales solutions consultant at FileMaker, and he will be building live your FileMaker solution. Before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes real quick. Uh, for the best experience, we recommend that you use a broadband um, connection. And if you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support. And the number is listed there for you. It's 1-800-259-8414. And again, the number right there on the screen is 888-259-8414. During the, uh, the presentation, you're going to have the opportunity to ask questions, and we actually encourage you to ask as many questions as possible. Um, obviously, Ryan's going to be presenting, so I'll either try to answer them live or we'll um, save them for the end. Um, and then let's just talk briefly on how to enter the questions. Um, you go to Control Panel and just click on Questions, uh, the, quest, uh, the question section, and enter your questions and just click Send. Um, we will cover as many of the questions as possible. Um, and I'll try to get most of them to, at the end. Um, just a couple things to go over. Um, if this is a FileMaker is considered a platform, and uh, FileMaker, um, st you could start out with FileMaker Pro, which is a flagship product, and it is what you use to build your solution. However, if you're building for or like a team of people or a large group, um, you might want to use FileMaker Pro Advanced. It's the second product on the right, which uh, comes with power tools such as the script debugger, the data viewer, and uh, database design reports, and allows custom menus and much more. Um, we also have the next product on there, which is FileMaker 12, um, and I mean FileMaker Server 12, and is the hub of successful FileMaker deployment, which allows you to host your FileMaker solutions for up to 250 people and provides automated backup and remote admission. FileMaker Server Advance, which is the next product on there, is similar to FileMaker Server, but it allows for FileMaker to be used as an OBDC data source and as an other function about functionality like instant web publishing. Um, and the reasons we are here today is for FileMaker Go, obviously, which brings your solution um, to the iPad, and that's available uh, for download at the Apple App Store, and it's 100% free. Um, and just uh, this is how you would design, deploy, and run your platform, and this is basically what uh, Ryan will be doing today. Here's a vision: you design and build your solution using either FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced. These solutions are then just hosted by FileMaker servers, so your team could connect over a LAN or WAN connection. And finally, you can run your FileMaker solution on a variety of devices. Which include uh, with web browser using custom web publishing, including the iPad, the iPhone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ryan now to start the demo. All right, thanks, Ben. And to start, I'd like to thank um, all of you for the submissions that we received for uh, today's idea to iPad demonstration. We had a high participation rate with a wide range of entries from places like the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School, and we chose the most popular one for this session. Now. FileMaker will continue holding Idea to iPad events in the future, so if your idea wasn't selected this time, keep submitting them for use as a potential demo. And while your use case may differ, uh, we'll still be covering some common techniques and features that you can still apply to your solution. So we received a request for a job ticketing system, volunteer management system, an application to track time billing, but based on the popularity of your submissions, the winning entry for today's demonstration is a project tracking solution. Now, among other things in this scenario, we would typically, uh, typically want to track the overall status of projects, allocated tasks and personnel, budgets, milestones, and have a reporting mechanism. But given our time frame today, we'll stick to laying the foundation centered on maintaining the schedules and tasks, and we'll build additional features if we have time. Now, let's create some context for our solution. Uh, let's assume our boss is requesting a project management tool to coordinate our annual conference event. He wants to make sure we're organized, we're sticking to plan, and he wants everyone involved to have visibility of the project while on the go. 
So we'll spend the next 40 minutes or so creating this tool for our boss, and we're really going to highlight the ease of building and delivering mobile solutions with FileMaker. So let's get started. Let's exit this out, and the first thing I'm going to do is launch uh, FileMaker uh, Pro Advanced 12 here, and I'll create a new database, okay? And I'll call this Projects, uh, Project Tracking, and save it to my desktop. First thing that happens when we create a new uh, database in FileMaker is we're brought to what we call table view, which is a spreadsheet-like view of your data. And this is an easy view to start adding, uh, creating, modifying uh, fields, and entering data. But today you'll see me um, uh, building a lot of our database in the Manage Database window. So let's head over there now. I'm going to go to File, Manage, Database. And we have a few more options in terms of building out our database schema. One, I can create additional tables. I can create fields associated with those tables, and I can build relationships. So let's jump back to the Tables tab. And we have a default table which takes the name of the file. And I'm just going to go ahead and change that to uh, Projects. And now let's, let's, add, uh, let's add some fields. So I'll click on the Fields tab. And the first thing I want to do is create a unique ID field for the project. I want to make sure each project has a unique value. I'm going to change the type to a number field and click Create. Now let's jump to the options for this field. And on the Auto Enter tab, I'm going to select the serial number option so that every time a new record is created or a new project, we'll get a uh, numerically sequential number to make sure it's a unique value. So I'll click OK. Now we probably want to add a title for our project, change that to a text field, and a description. Click Create. Um, the submissions are also requested that we track the status of the project. And how about the budget? And for the budget, I'll change this to number. Click Create. And this project is going to have a start date and an end date. So let's create a start date. We'll change that field to a date type. And I'll create a due date. Now let's take that concept a step further. We know we have a start date and a due date, but we really want to emphasize how much time we have left remaining in the project. So I'm going to create a field called Days Remaining. And I'm going to uh, make this a calculation field. So I click Create. We are brought to FileMaker's specified calculation window. And what we're looking at right now are the fields within my current table, some operators, and a list of all of the preset uh, calculation functions in FileMaker. And what we would do is essentially just combine all of these, and even with literal text, to make different expressions that produce different results. But in this scenario, we're just looking for the time left in our project so I'm going to say uh, due date minus, I'm going to jump to our get functions family and select the get current date function. So essentially we're telling FileMaker, hey, take the value that's in due date minus today's date. Go to storage options and make sure that this is not uh, stored. And we'll calculate when necessary. Click OK. All right, that's a pretty good structure that we have for our uh, projects table so far. Let's go ahead and click OK and see what we're working with. As you can see, the um, default layout, uh, table view layout, has uh, adopted the field that we just created. However, the table view spreadsheet-like view won't necessarily give our iOS users the best iOS experience. So let's build a layout that um, will do that for them. And first thing I do is go to View, Layout Mode. And in this mode, this is where we can um, really change the design and the look of the database. I'm going to go to the Layouts menu at the top and click New Layout Report, and I'm brought to the Create a Layout Report wizard. So I'm going to show records from the Projects table I just created. I'll call this Projects iPad. It's a standard form. Click Next. Let's go ahead and grab all of the fields in our current table. And next, we have uh, the option to choose one of the rich new themes introduced in FileMaker 12, and there's 40 of them. And as I scroll through, you'll notice that some of these are marked as touch. And the difference is that you'll notice that the touch has larger objects and larger uh, font like you would expect uh, on your iOS device. So I'm going to scroll down a bit and uh, choose one of my favorites, Ocean Touch, and click Finish. OK, and now we have a layout that's a little bit more um, uh, ready for the iOS. Next thing I'm going to do is use this screen and dimensions feature. Okay, 
And what this allows is it gives me guidelines to uh, create a layout that uh, perfectly fits a, a certain resolution. So I'm going to choose the iPad landscape option. And you notice I now have these golden guidelines that represent the iOS and landscape view. Now all I need to do is just drag my current layout to those dimensions. And just like that, that's uh, customizing in FileMaker. Okay, let's keep building out. Uh, I want to make this uh, a little bit more presentable for the iOS device. Uh, so I'm going to move some fields around. And there's a few ways that we can do that. First thing I'm going to do is click, hold, and drag. And I'm going to select all of these fields and move this down a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing and move some of these uh, fields over. So we can start uh, designing our layout. I'll bring the project ID field down. And what you saw me do is uh, hold down the shift key to select a multiple field. That's another way we can move fields around. And I'll put these labels right on top of the fields. And what you see right now is that uh, these blue lines that appear, that's what we call dynamic guidelines. And they help you uh, align your fields. Let's make these uh, fields a little bit larger. The description field is probably going to be a little bit larger as well. So we can enter more information. And I'll bring this over to the side right here. Now let's do the same thing with the status and uh, budget fields. And the start date and the due date. Put these labels right on top. The start date over top of the start date field. Perfect. Let's align these a little bit more. Okay. And I'll make sure these fields match. Again, I'm using the dynamic uh, guidelines to make sure that everything is aligned properly here. Okay. And draw my field out a little bit more. Perfect. I'm going to click, hold, and select all of these fields. All right. Now we have a cleaner looking layout for that uh, iOS uh, solution. Let's save these changes and uh, go back to Browse Mode where we can enter information. Uh, I'd say it's a pretty good start in just five minutes, right? OK, let's keep building out. I'm going to jump back into uh, Layout Mode. I can again go to View Layout Mode. I can click on this button here, Edit Layout. and for iOS solution, it, for the user experience, it's all about uh, you know the touch and the tapping. So I think we can do a few things to format our solution better to streamline how users enter our data. The first thing I want to do is go to our budget field, and I'll bring up the inspector. And uh, if you accidentally close out your inspector, you can open it again by clicking on this uh, I or information button right here. And on the data tab down at the bottom, I want to format this number field as a currency, and I'll choose the thousand separator. Now, uh, in, in terms of that, tap, that tapping and touching iOS-like experience, for the, uh, the date fields, let's go ahead and make that a drop-down calendar. Right now, it's configured the edit box where you click into a field and you start typing away. There's a, diff a few different options that we can choose. We can make it a drop-down list, pop-up menu. But that, uh, down at the bottom, we'll have a drop-down calendar option. So we'll choose that. And for the due date, we'll just do the same thing, turn that into a drop-down calendar. For the status button, instead of having our users enter the, um, the progress of the status every time, uh, we can also stream that, streamline that a little bit. So I'm going to turn that into a uh, pop-up menu. And I now have a new option to uh, associate a value list with uh, this field. So I'm going to create a new value list. And uh, we'll call this status. And there's a few options. I could pull from another field, another table. But uh, for this scenario, we can just create custom uh, values. So I'll say in progress, completed, and closed. I'll click OK. All right, so it looks good. Let's go ahead and save this layout and jump back to browse mode. OK, we'll exit this layout. Now, there's a few things we can do now. We can start um, building security for our file, adding accounts and account privileges, determining uh, who can access our file and what they can do in our file. We can host this with FileMaker server and have um, people all around the country, all around the world accessing our files. So 
Let's go ahead and uh, throw it up on the FileMaker Network and see what it looks like on our iOS device. So we're going to do a file sharing FileMaker Network. Okay. Uh, make sure sharing is on. All users selected for project tracking. That looks good. And what you're seeing me do right now is hosting this file with FileMaker Pro's peer-to-peer um, -peer workgroup like sharing capability. In your solution, you would be um, hosting this with a FileMaker server for added security and uh, reliability. But for this demonstration, uh, hosting with FileMaker Pro uh, will be good. Okay, so now I'm going to launch my Reflector app, which is going to allow me to AirPlay the iOS uh, or iPad device they have in my hands right now. So I'm going to take a minute to launch uh, my FileMaker Go. And you should be able to see my screen in a second. Okay, perfect. So this is the, uh, the iPad that I'm currently holding in my hand. And first thing I'm going to do is tap on to FileMaker Go. All right. And up in the right corner, this icon right here with the magnifying glass, it's going to search for all of the um, machines that are currently hosting FileMaker files in the local area network. And as you scroll down to the bottom, we'll see mine, Rhyme and Look MacBook Pro. So I'll tap on that. And there's our database, Project Tracking. Okay. Now on the bottom left, this button right here, I'm going to tap on that and choose the iPad layout that we created. Okay, and within a few minutes, we have uh, the start of a solution deployed over um, to our iOS device. So let's go ahead and add some uh, add a record. Okay, add new record, and we'll call this the 2014 annual conference. Okay, again, we're, we want to track this event and say this is plan and track our annual developer conference in December. Okay. Now for the status, um, let's see what, uh, what changed with our formatting. So I'll tap on this and in progress. All right, perfect. Budget, we'll say it's $2 million. Okay, we get that nice uh, dollar sign and um, thousand separator like we specified. The start date, we'll say we started planning for this back in April, and we have this nice um, calendar rule like you would expect on the iOS device, right? And the due date, we'll say is uh, December so it's just around the corner. Okay. And notice down at the bottom, our days remaining calculation picked up how much time we have left. Okay. We notice one thing, the status field is uh, a little bit short. It's cutting off our in progress. So let's go ahead and change that in FileMaker Pro. Go back to FileMaker Pro for a second. Jump back into layout mode. And let's drag these fields out for a little bit more real estate. Again, I'm just holding down the shift, click, uh, shift key and selecting these fields. And then let's drag out our title and description as well. Okay. Let's save those changes. Exit the layout. Uh, a little bit short. Let's do that again. All right. Let's see what we're working with. I'll save these changes and go back to browse mode. There we go. Now let's jump back into our iOS device. Okay. And you'll notice that uh, those changes are immediately made. So anyone accessing this file, uh, again, all around the world, they're seeing that, uh, that change. Uh, it's all automatic. Okay, let's keep building out. Let me just jump back into FileMaker Pro, and I'll go back to layout mode. And let's do a few things to really make the title and the days remaining um, fields pop out. What I'm going to do is insert a merge field. And essentially what this does is it grabs the value um, of a field. And this is great for um, letters, um, contracts, things like that. I'm going to um, increase the font size a little bit larger, and I'm going to add some 
a text box to our layout called Days Remaining. Okay, just put that under here. And I'll insert another merge field. And I'm going to grab the value from Days Remaining. Okay, just put that right underneath here. And since we have this value listed here, I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, calculation field down at the bottom. All right. So let's say those changes and take a look at our solution. Okay. Right. Now we have a title that really pops out uh, when we're scrolling through records, and we get a nice indication of how much time is remaining uh, back on our iOS device. Again, those changes are reflected immediately. So let's add some business logic to this. Let's say that. Um, if the time is uh, less than 30 days, I, really, I want to mark this as red. I want this uh, to really pop out. And what we're going to use is a feature called conditional formatting. So let's jump back into layout mode. I'm going to highlight my merge field. I'm going to control or right click on it and select conditional formatting. And I want to add calculation that says if the days remaining is less than 30, Okay, the value in the days remaining a field is less than 30. Let's make that a bright red and we'll bold as well. So I'll click OK, save that layout, and let's look at browse mode, and there we go. It really pops out that uh, we're, uh, we have less than 30 days left, so we really have to make sure that we're hitting all of our, um, our tasks and milestones. Okay, so let's jump back into uh, layout mode. And speaking of task and milestones, there's two things that um, you guys really wanted to see tracked in the um, in this solution. So I'm going to uh, bring out a tab control object, and uh, this is essentially what it sounds like. It allows you to have uh, tabs on your layout, and I'm going to call oh, one tab milestones and uh, another tab tasks. Okay. Now, we could create a, a milestone field, text field, and uh, enter the information um, in the milestone text field. But there's probably things about each milestone and each task that we want to um, really track and modify. So it would be a better practice if we create a, a separate milestone table and a separate task table um, and uh, bring them into our solution. So. Um, Let's go ahead and go to File, Manage Database, back to our uh, Manage Database window. And we'll add a new table called Milestones. Okay, And now we'll add some fields. And again, we want to make sure that we have a unique ID for each milestone. So I'll make that a number. And again, I want to make sure that anytime a new record is created, we get a unique value. And then I want to create a pre, uh, Project ID field. and this will help us associate the proper uh, milestones with the proper projects. Okay, and then a few things we want to track. How about the, again the due date for the milestone? Very important. Uh, a description. Change that to a text field, and um, we want to know if uh, we hit the uh, milestone or not. All right, so click OK there. And now let's jump to the relationships tab. And essentially, we want to associate a lot of milestones uh, with a project. And in order to create a relationship like that, it's really simple. We just need to find uh, the common um, the common fields, the common values uh, between the two tables. And in this scenario, it's the project ID. So I'm going to click and hold the project ID uh, field from the projects table, and just drag it over to the project ID field in the milestones table. And just like that, we've created a relationship. So we're saying, FileMaker, um, please find me all the records that uh, where the project ID equals a project ID and allow me to share that data. So I'll click OK. Now, back in the layout, in order to share uh, multiple uh, related records, in this case multiple milestones to a, a singular pro project, we're going to use uh, what's called a portal. Okay? Again, this allows us to show multiple related records. So I'll draw that onto my layout. And that's asking where do you want to show related records from? Well, I want to show uh, related records from milestones. I'll show a vertical scroll bar. Click OK. Now, what fields do you want to show? Well, let's choose the due date, the description, and the completion. We'll click OK. And now we have those fields populated in our portal. Excellent. Let's just go ahead and format this a little bit. Okay, we'll 
move these uh, fields around. Again, I'm just clicking and dragging these handles to resize. And now we'll add some labels. I'm going to use the text tool. Say due date. And I could go back to the text tool again if I wanted to to add another label. Call this description. Or I could uh, hit the uh, Command D or Control D on Windows and uh, duplicate this object just to save a little bit of time. And I'll call this completion. All right. Now, let's jump back, save these changes, and jump back to browse mode. Obviously, we don't have any uh, records right now in our database, so nothing's going to show. So how do we add records from the milestone table into our project? Well, there's a few things we can do. Um, first of all, you'll notice that after we created the milestones table, if I jump back to my layouts, we have an um, associated milestone layout. Okay? So what we could do is essentially one way is use buttons and scripts and uh, variables to grab this um, uh, the appropriate project ID, jump to the milestones uh, layout, create a new record, um, associate uh, the proper project ID to this field, okay, and then um, jump back to the project's layout and uh, to the appropriate um, project that we were working on. That's one way to do it, um, and it's actually a good um, it's a it's a good method, especially when uh, if you have a portal and you want to fill out information but you don't have enough real estate in the portal. But for this scenario, I want to add uh, records just directly uh, within the portal, okay? And to do so, well, you can see right now, if I, I click in the uh, portal, I can't really do anything. Uh, let's just back, jump back to the Manage Database window. So I'm going to go to File, Manage, Database, okay? And I'm going to double-click the relationship. I'm going to tell FileMaker, hey, in the Milestones table, allow me to create uh, records in this table via this relationship. So I'll click OK, click OK. And now we have active fields that we can enter information in. So let's jump back to layout mode for a second, and let's format uh, these fields, uh, kind of like we did with the, the project fields, OK? Streamlining it a bit for our users. So let's make the due date a drop-down calendar, and we'll make the completion field. Let's also make this a uh, pop-up menu and create a new value list. We'll call this completion and we'll say yes or in progress and click OK. All right, now let's save these changes and jump back to browse mode. Let's hop over back to our um, iOS device and uh, Let's enter some information on the milestones table. Okay, so you can see the changes were automatically added. So now when I uh, tap onto the due date field, again, we get that nice uh, scroll menu. And we'll say that uh, in the end of April, okay, one milestone that we want is um, budget approval. Okay, for our next milestone, we want to make sure that uh, at least by early um, May, we have dates approval. Okay, and let's add one more. Let's say by um, July, we want to make sure that all of the uh, uh, hotel confirmation is uh, completed. I want to make sure that we have the right amount of room books and we uh, know all of the uh, guests who are going to, that we're going to be putting up in the hotel. Okay? And in terms of completion field, we can just tap on that. All right? And we get uh, this nice pop-up menu. Yes. All right. All right. Perfect. All right, let's jump back to FileMaker Pro and let's keep building this out. I think um, we can make this a little bit more um, uh, in terms of user interface. We can make it really stand out what the user has to do for the milestones or adding a milestone. So let's create a, a button that will automatically add um, a, a new uh, record to uh, the portal. 
Okay, so I'm going to jump back into layout mode, and first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a script. Okay, let's go to scripts, manage scripts. Actually, uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, name our portal, and this will come into play in a minute. So I'm going to name the portal object milestone portal. Okay, and now we'll go to our scripts, manage scripts, and create a new script, and I'll call this add milestone. And in this script uh, window, what you're seeing is on the left, these are um, uh, preset script steps in FileMaker. And what you do is essentially you can drag a few um, script steps out into the main screen. Okay? And you can use these in conjunction with calculations. And, and essentially what's going to happen is that the scripts will uh, fire off sequentially and they'll perform a task for you. So in this scenario, um, I actually want to use the go to object script step. I'm going to say uh, go to the milestone portal object, all right, and go to the last portal row, okay. Um, each portal always has a, uh, an empty portal row. And then uh, go to a, uh, the due date uh, field from the milestones table, okay. So let's save that script, and now let's create a button on our layout so we can um, trigger that script. So up in the uh, toolbar, I clicked on this button, but uh, button icon. Draw that button on our layout. Select Perform Script. Choose Add Milestone. Okay. And now I'll give my button a name. Okay. And I'll just edit that a little bit. All right, perfect. So let's uh, save these changes, go back to browse mode, and see if that works. Okay. If I click on this in FileMaker Pro, all right, we get this nice uh, drop-down calendar. We'll say um, by, uh, let's say, October or September, early September, we want location confirmation. And, yeah, we hit that. Okay. Let's see if we get the same type of behavior in in FileMaker Go. Okay. See, again, the Add Milestone button automatically there. I tap on that, and I get uh, this change. Let's say by um, November 18th, we have finalized speaker list. And we can say that is in progress. All right, pretty good start so far. Um, and really all we've done is just drag and drop a few things, um, edit the look of the fields by, again, uh, dragging and dropping and clicking and pointing, that type of stuff. So let's keep building. Let's add the task to our solution. Okay? So let's go back to uh, Edit Layout. And we'll go back to File, Manage, Database. And now we want to add a Tasks table. Okay, so click Create there. And let's add some fields again. We want to make a unique ID for tasks. All right. And make sure, again, that each task is unique. We'll add a Project ID field so we can associate all the tasks to the proper project. Okay. And then a few things that we want to track, like um, let's say we want an assets field. And we'll make this a container field, which allows us to store media, like um, movies, uh, sound files, and uh, images. So we'll create that. Let's add a description field. OK. We also want to know the due date for the task. And let's add a cost field. Okay, we want to know how much we're spending for each task and make sure that uh, we're within budget. So we'll create there. And we'll jump back to the relationships tab. And again, we're just tr trying to find those common values between task and projects. It's going to be project ID. And all we need to do is again click, hold the field, drag it to uh, the field that you want to create a relationship to in the next table. All right. And we have uh, 
that relationship. And uh, I'll double-click this relationship again and make sure that we have allow creation of records in this table via this relationship set so that we can add records in that portal. So click OK. Now let's jump to the Tasks tab in layout mode and we'll draw a portal. Okay. And this time you want to choose records from tasks. I'll show a vertical scroll bar. I'm just going to choose to show uh, two rows and I'll use the alternate background fill for this one. And I want the asset, description, the due date, and the cost. So I'll click OK. And since we have an image, I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Let's just draw this field out here like this. Okay, let's make the description a little bit longer, uh, larger as well. Okay, we'll format the date field like we'd expect a drop down calendar for the iOS. And again, for the cost, we'll make this a currency with a thousand separator. And then again, I'll add uh, some labels. So I'll create a text field or a text box and call this assets here. And again, we could go back to the text box, or I'm just going to uh, Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows to duplicate that object. Save some time. Description. Say this is due date. And changes to cost. Okay. And like we did with the Milestones tab, let's make it easier for our users by creating an um, Add Task button. So we're going to click on the portal, and on the Position tab, give it a name. We'll call this Tasks Portal. Okay. Go back to the Scripts menu, and we'll create a new script called Add Tasks. Okay. And again, going to add some script steps that fire off sequentially to perform a task and in this scenario it's going to jump us to the um, last row of the portal. So go to the object, the task portal, go to the last portal and then go to the uh, due date field from the task table. Okay, so we'll save that script. Again, up at the top in the toolbar and layout mode, we have this button icon. So I'll draw that onto our um, layout. Choose to perform the add task script. Click OK. We'll call this add tasks. Edit the size of this by dragging the handles again. OK. So Let's, jump, let's save these changes, jump back to browse mode and see what we're working with. All right, so we'll go to the task tab. All right, we have a portal listed there. And let's click add task. Very good. Uh, that's working. We have this drop down calendar. And we'll say um, here in early August, we wanted to uh, meet with uh, the location manager about uh, cost. All right. And we finalized the location, so let's go ahead and take an image. From our desktop, okay? This is where we're going to hold our conference, all right? Maybe the next task is email um, uh, contracts to uh, our vendors, okay? And we'll say that this is due in September. Okay. And again, we'll insert the contract just like that. Okay. Well, what can you do with um, this portal on uh, the iOS device? Well, let's jump back into our iOS device. All right. I'm going to tap the task tab. Okay. And Let's click the, uh, or tap the Add Task button. Okay. And we'll say that, um, okay. All right. Back 
in September. Uh, I'm sorry, let's say October. Oops, let's add this the new task. We'll say the end of October. We want to meet with um, meet with the uh, awards designer. Okay. Now, instead of um, uh, we could choose an image that we already have on the device, or we could use a device's camera to uh, take a picture. So I'm going to tap and hold onto uh, that container field, and you see uh, the third option down is, I'm oh, sorry, the first option is a camera. I'm just going to choose the camera option, okay? And you can see exactly what um, uh, we're looking at right now. So this is going to be the design for the uh, award. We're going to uh, click on that, uh, or take this picture, all right, and we're going to tap on the Use button down at the bottom right, and we now have a picture of uh, that award uh, in our task. Pretty cool. Okay, so the final piece of this uh, is the cost, all right? Let's associate some costs here. I'm going to say that... Um, and the cost for, to rent out this location, including food and things like that, would be, uh, oops, I'm still in this record, is $1.2 million, okay? Um, the awards, uh, if, if you want to go with those awards, we're going to see uh, that'll be, uh, say, ten grand, okay? And we want a, essentially a, a total cost here, how much we're uh, spending so that we can uh, align that with uh, the budget. So what we're going to do is let's just go back to the Manage Database window. File Manage Database, okay? And we'll make sure that we're looking at the fields on the tasks uh, table. And I'm going to call uh, create a field called Total Cost. Now, I could create a calculation for this, but... I'm going to use this uh, summary field uh, type that we have. I'm going to click Create, and I'm going to choose the total of uh, the cost field. So I'll click OK, click OK, and let's jump back to layout mode. Okay, and in the toolbar up here at the right, this is a field tool, so we can drag a field onto our layout. Actually, let's put this right here for a second. I want to be on the Task tab, so you can drag this field to our layout, and I'm going to pull from the task table and the total cost, okay, make sure this is properly aligned with the cost field at the top, okay, and let's format this as a currency, go to the data tab, currency, use thousand separator. All right, so now when I save these changes and go to uh, browse mode, go to the task tab, it looks like we have to make this a little bit larger. Okay, there we go. We have the total cost uh, listed down uh, at the bottom, and we can um, compare that to the budget. This is another great place where you would uh, maybe want to um, add some conditional formatting, um, and you can even uh, put it at the top here uh, as a merge field to make it really stand out. So uh, one thing that you saw as, as I was working through this field is that I was getting um, a few messages saying, um, hey, someone's already with, uh, working within this uh, record. So, for example, if I'm in FileMaker Pro and I'm, I'm uh, making these changes, uh, let's say I want to update uh, the description, okay? And now I'm going to jump to FileMaker Go. And I'm going to uh, update the budget. We just heard from Finance, and they're giving us another $500,000. So I'm going to tap into that field and uh, make a change. Okay, oops, let me make this change here. Okay, 
So we're getting the message now that uh, you cannot modify this record until um, the admin is finished with it. Okay. Uh, essentially, this would just this should just be uh, any user. Uh, it's just pulling off the name of my computer. So what you're seeing right now is automatic record locking. So if you're going to have a lot of people accessing this uh, solution um, uh, through the, your iOS device or through FileMaker Pro or through the web, uh, you have this nice um, automatic security that's already pre-built in the FileMaker so that uh, you're always going to have one consolidated version of the truth. So let's click OK. All right. All right. Let's go look at our iOS solution. And I think we'll stop there. I think we, we built a really good structure about what, 40 minutes. Uh, you know, we added projects, tasks, milestones. Again, all we really did is just add a few fields, uh, drag and drop, resize a few fields as well. Um, and, and that's really how uh, easy it is to get started and start building uh, your iOS solutions uh, with FileMaker. So, what I'd like to do now is kind of talk about some resources, where you would want it to uh, go next in terms of uh, uh, further developing um, in FileMaker. I'm going to jump back into uh, our keynote for a second. All right. And one of the best places is the um, FileMaker Knowledge Base. I'm going to reference a few Knowledge Base articles um, in, a, in a minute. Um, but I want to let you know this is at, uh, you can access this at help.filemaker.com. And uh, in the search field, you can enter some search terms. Um, but it may be a little bit easier to uh, just, uh, if you have some um, knowledge based articles that you really like, you can capture the uh, ID and just enter the ID uh, in the search field and it will find the articles for you. So, um, some, for example, that uh, we'll kind of go over what I went uh, over today uh, relational database design, knowledge based article. Uh, 3247, uh, working with portals, 5561. Uh, many, many to relationships. This is a, a really important feature in terms of uh, creating many to many relationships. Uh, and I highly recommend that uh, you review this and kind of get comfortable with that, this idea. It's, uh, it's essential in terms of building in FileMaker. Uh, what you saw us do today is uh, essentially one to many um, relationships, like one project with many milestones, one project uh, to many tasks. Um, if we built this out, a many-to-many -many relationship, you may see, uh, for example, uh, a personnel table or an employee's table where you would have uh, one employee could be associated with uh, many tasks, and a task could uh, be associated with a team of employees. In order to build that out, um, uh, we have a, a, a certain uh, methodology using a, what we call a joint table, and this um, article, 9922, uh, goes over that. Uh, really important. And then planning scripts with FileMaker Pro 6151. This is really good in terms of how you want to uh, kind of set the table with your scripts. Aside from that, uh, there's a lot of great online material. Uh, VTC.com, Linda.com are great resources. They're um, uh, video-based, so you can watch um, uh, features built out and the tutorials there. There's more FileMaker web seminars at uh, uh, www.filemaker.com support webinars. And uh, for a list of other training resources, Go to FileMaker.com forward slash support forward slash training um, for a list of uh, other things, including um, instructor-led training and other uh, self-paced materials. Okay, uh, so at this time, I'd like to jump to um, the Q&A. And we'll try to answer as uh, many as we can, um, uh, time considering. Okay. So start off, when you use the camera, where does it save to? Um, does it go in the database, elsewhere on the computer, or is it only stored on that iOS device? Uh, this, is a, this is a great question. So um, right now, I'm accessing the iOS uh, database that's currently hosted on my FileMaker Pro. And FileMaker 12 introduced this great new feature called external storage. So you can set up the container field where um, the images, the media, uh, like movies, sound files, that exist in a folder specified on um, your computer, or um, with FileMaker Server, there's actually a specified um, uh, location for that, a uh, folder for there. Um, so that's essentially where it's, how it's stored uh, when you take that uh, photo. Um, what happens to my layout on iPad when I rotate my device? Will it look the same? Another great question. So what we did is, in this scenario, we built out um, a layout to, uh, for iOS on uh, a landscape view. Um, really, I just did that for a little bit more real estate for this demonstration. 
but there's, there's two ways of tackling this. Um, and the first way is uh, creating an additional layout in portrait view, okay? And then using a function, uh, I believe it's uh, get window content height and get window content width, and you would capture that essentially by having a script run, um, an, an on-timer script run, you know, about every second or two. So that uh, it's constantly checking to see, okay, uh, what's the width and height of uh, this, uh, this particular um, uh, uh, or where the device is, okay, it'll capture if it's in landscape or portrait. So, for example, if it uh, matches the content and the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, height and the width to landscape mode, it's going to jump and, and stay on that uh, uh, landscape layout. If it uh, sees that the device content and width and height matches portrait mode, it's going to jump to the uh, uh, portrait uh, layout. Uh, the second way is um, using anchors. And let me jump into a FileMaker Pro database for a second. I'm going to jump back to uh, layout mode, okay, and let's go to inspector, okay, and these anchors, the way they, that you break this down, um, it may be a little bit past the scope of this, uh, this webinar, but essentially you would have uh, kind of three parts to your layout. You would have kind of like one main uh, section of your layout that would fit in both landscape and portrait mode. Then you have a second section that would uh, um, only be revealed in landscape mode, and the third section that would only be revealed in uh, portrait mode. And depending on, on uh, which view you're in, landscape or portrait mode, uh, the section on uh, the right of the layout, the section uh, at, at the bottom of the layout is going to be hidden. It's going to be hidden underneath of the, um, uh, the main layout using uh, this uh, anchoring. Okay. Um, there's more information um, online uh, to kind of uh, suss that out in, in terms of how to break that down, but that's just essentially like a high-level way of how you would use it. Okay. Can I use my database on my iPad when I'm not online? Um, great question. So with uh, FileMaker Go, let me jump back into uh, my iOS and launch this. Let me close out this database window. All right. On the left-hand side, uh, you'll see uh, files that exist or are stored on this device. Okay, so if you want, if you were in an area where the connection is poor, there isn't a network at all, what you can do is take a copy of your database, store it in um, on your iOS device, um, and the way you would get it to your iOS device is, you know, through iTunes, email it to yourself, uh, or through a website. All right, and um, you can update the information there. Uh, now, getting the information back to the host has uh, um, varying levels of complexity. If you're going to be creating new records uh, that no one else is going to edit, um, then you know, that's a straightforward. You can just import that information back into the uh, main host file when you're back in the office or if you have a, uh, in an area with a network connection. If you're going to be um, in, uh, updating records or creating records that other people need to update, okay, and uh, may have created updates too while you're offline, then there's a level of complexity there. There's some business logic required in terms of the import that you'd have to configure, um, like uh, whose, um, uh, whose updates are you going to, or modifications are you going to keep? Um, is it based on time? Is it based on you know, administrator rights? That type of thing. There's also a uh, great plugin called, or, uh, a great uh, software program called MirrorSync by 360 Works, one of our great developers. Um, and uh, that kind of automates that process for you. Uh, do I need FileMaker Pro Advanced to build databases for FileMaker Go? Uh, you actually saw me build in, um, Fil in FileMaker Pro Advanced, uh, but if you want to build databases, it, it could be either FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced. FileMaker Pro Advanced is, is really just a superset of FileMaker Pro, so you get additional tools uh, that developers would use. Um, I would highly recommend that if you are um, going to develop it, you would, you would want to use a copy of FileMaker Pro Advanced. The script debugger is, uh, is, you know, it's really great. It allows you to uh, step through your scripts, kind of see um, what's, where, where the scripts break or not. Data Viewer makes sure that your calculations are, um, uh, you know, uh, you're getting the results that you want. Um, and even things like custom menus uh, where you can um, you know, have a little bit more control uh, for the users or, or over the, uh, how the users um, interact with your solution. Um, let's see. 
I think uh, that will be all the questions. Um, we already answered how do we get database on my iPad, iPhone, and can it be answered uh, from maker that is an uploaded file maker on PC, Mac? We answered that for um, in terms of uh, the networking uh, question, uh, networking offline. All right, this has been uh, a lot of fun. Uh, again, file maker will be holding uh, more idea to iPad um, webinars. Continue submitting your ideas. I hope you learned um, some great things here today. You can apply to your solution. On behalf of Ben Cotterell, it's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll see you soon.